Today, we're going to talk about some of the items that should be in every equine first aid kit. Many of these some people miss out on. So let's take a look at some of the things that I've got here and show you what you should have in the event of an emergency. The first thing that we're going to talk about are syringes. I find that many people don't put these into their first aid kits, maybe because they're harder to find than bandages or, or gauze wrapping, but they belong in every first aid kit because they do have many uses. Our first item is our trusty 60cc syringe. This has a big capacity that you can use for many purposes. It's very good for irrigating wounds um, when you need to introduce a lot of fluid to the area. Uh, it's very good for uh, syringing food or medicine into the horse's mouth because this tube is very similar to a worming tube. And you can take the plunger out, like so, and fill it up with medicine, maybe mix it in applesauce, uh, whatever you need, and then you just fit it back on and you're ready to go. You can see that these syringes are both in sterile packaging. This is important. I always keep some that are non-sterile that I can use for applications that don't need things to be completely clean. But if you're working with an open wound, for instance, everything that you use should be sterile to prevent introducing foreign bacteria. 3cc syringes like this are very good because, I'll open it up here, break the sterile seal. The small size is perfect for putting things like uh, antibiotic ointment in. Uh, and then you, again, just can fit the plunger back on and then introduce it into an area. Um, these are good for putting into uh, the hooves if you have deep thrush in there. Uh, they often work much better than the, uh, the bottles uh, that medicine like that comes in. And then these 1cc syringes, uh, many come with the sharp of the needle already in place. Um, and I think that it's very important for horse owners to know how to use equipment like this because there are times when we have to or should be able to uh, inject horses with medicine ourselves um, instead of necessarily needing the vet to do it for us. So these are very good for um, very small doses of medicine. Our next two items are two that you can find in your very own bathroom but they work extremely well in a horse first aid kit. They are the toothbrush and the disposable razor. Both these items are very cheap and very useful. A soft bristle toothbrush like this is great for um, cleaning in hooves if you need to get out every little speck of dirt. Uh, they're good for um, scrubbing stains on a horse's coat. Uh, if you need a spot of dirt out before a show. And if you uh, sterilize a toothbrush beforehand, uh, say in bleach solution, it can be used uh, to scrub wounds uh, if the situation calls for it. The razor also has uses a couple different ways. Personally, I like to use them for grooming. Um, they're uh, very good for small areas of hair, just like, you know, we use them for grooming ourselves. They're also good for removing hair in a pinch if you're in a situation, say, out on the trail, where you don't have access to your clippers, or you're working uh, in an emergency with a horse who won't tolerate clippers. These can be purchased at almost any store, and they're very cheap, uh, which is a good thing because they don't last long against horse hair. They're not meant for horses, they're meant for people, so uh, they're pretty much a one-use item. So stock up on several of these to put in your first aid kit. You never know when they'll come in handy. Our next item starts the topic of sterile care. Iodine solution. 
I prefer using this over peroxide because it's more stable and if you use it correctly it doesn't cause tissue damage. Now that is a note about iodine. If you use it full strength on live tissue you can cause damage. If I'm using it as a scrub or flushing out a wound I really like to cut it uh, with saline solution um, even though this is only 10% iodine solution and even less iodine as an element. Our next two items follow the uh, iodine train. These are iodine swap sticks. The brand name is Betadine. It's a very um, common brand of iodine. And these are pretty much overgrown Q-tips with the iodine built in. They're good if you uh, need a quick swab. They're already sterile. Uh, which is a plus. All you have to do is take the top off, the stick is right in there, and you can use it wherever you need to get the iodine. And Q-tips have a variety of uses, sterile or non-sterile. Um, they're good for uh, sampling secretions. Uh, they're good for getting rid of very small spots of blood or fluid. Um, and they're good for applying ointment to areas. The only thing you have to watch out for is that the, uh, the little cotton threads don't irritate an area that you're trying to heal. Next are some sterile sharps. These are very cheap. They're, um, of course, sterile in the packaging. You should never reuse a sharp. And they come already capped. I think that everyone should know how to use these in case you need to do your own injections. Uh, you can also use them for blood collection, uh, provided that you have the equipment to do that with. Uh, but these are, um, what gauge are these? These are 18 gauge needles, and they range uh, from very tiny to very large. Uh, the larger uh, the, the gauge, the, uh, the smaller the needle. So a 27 gauge needle is very small. An 18 gauge is quite thick. Um, and might be used on horses or other large animals. Here we have vet wrap. It is your best friend in a variety of situations. It's good for an emergency bandage or a veterinarian approved bandage. And this is it in the wrapper. It's still wrapped up and then here we can see uh, the vet wrap up close and the interesting thing about this is that it's made to stick to itself and not wounds. So you can wrap it around and it will stick to itself and then it's very easily taken apart. Okay, just a couple more items. This one is very frequently overlooked. It's a handy dandy flashlight. And these are very good for a lot of situations where you might not be able to see, and it doesn't have to be in the dark either. Looking up your horse's nose, looking into the ears, checking for foreign bodies, checking teeth. It's very good to have a light. Even looking at their hooves. Um, if you need to look inside the central sulcus of the hoof, uh, say you've got a bad case of thrush and you need to you know, take an eyeball in there, you're not going to be able to see it unless you're standing right in the blazing light of day and that would be pretty uncomfortable. So an instant light little flashlight like this is a great source of light in a pinch. Of course, this is not a complete list of what should be in your first aid kit. We've skipped over some of the basics like a thermometer for instance. But I think it's a good list of some of the things that tend to be forgotten and some of the things that should downright always be in your first aid kit. In one of our next videos, we'll take a look at how to actually use some of these items on a horse in real time. Until then, happy horsing!